It's addictive, it's like a drug. Once you're on it, you just can't get off it, it's hard. It's like an adrenaline rush. It just keeps going through you. And you want more and more and more. Nearly half of all school children say they have suffered some kind of bullying. 30% say they are scared to go to school. They call me fat, they call me ugly, they call me smelly, horse, lag, slapper. When I used to have glasses, it'd be specky four eyes. They'd pin me in the corner and muck up my hair. And then they'd either kick me or punch me. He stabbed me with pencils and stuff. As many as 20 children a year commit suicide because of bullying. This is the story of four young people who've been pushed to the edge. I used to want to commit suicide, but I used to write, like, letters to my mum and tell her how much I loved her and everything. Goodbye letters. James Best is 14. He's been bullied since he was seven. An only child, he lives with his mother in Norwich. I just feel horrible. Jay, come on! Jay, that's caught too! Get up! I don't want to go to school. I dread it. You wake up, you think, oh great, I've got school and don't want to go because people will bully you. And then when you get there, you're dreading it even more because you're actually there. Sometimes when I arrive at school, I have wet marks because my coat leaks a bit, so they reckon that I sweat loads which isn't true. Are you still living in that dumpster? Are you still living in that box? They call me a tramp and that I live in a dumpster and I can't afford a brush. Such a loser. Sometimes you get crowds of people that, because they don't like you, they pin you in a corner and mess up my hair or call me names or kick me just because they don't like me or because they want to have some fun. If you get people who don't like you, you take the mickey out of your handwriting, what you're doing. If you get a question wrong, they'll laugh at you. If you get it right, they'll call you a boff, which is like a geek or a nerd. Do you say anything back to them? No. I just ignore them, try to get on with it and talk to my mates. Do you think it would be better if you said something back? No, because then they have a go at me for it. I had loads of friends at school and they were quite popular at school until um, the word got out all the way through the school that I were American. Then um, people started bullying me and calling me names. 11-year-old Amber Hall has lived in Doncaster for the past four years. She moved here from America when her mother met and married an Englishman. Her stepfather no longer lives with them. I can remember a time where I'm in my math class and a boy actually opened the door in math and shouted, American bitch, get back to your own country, and then walked off. School didn't do anything. Then people were starting to spread rumours around school and saying horrible stuff about me. Everybody was coming up to me asking me if I was going to have abortion, if, if I were pregnant and who, and who was the father. And then they started the rumour about the that I'm a prostitute. Oh, that's disgusting. Don't even look at And then one day I was just someone come up to me 
They said that I was setting up videos and doing things with boys I shouldn't be. She's just a very gentle, tender little girl, and she gets hurt very easily now. Um, I guess because it's been going on for so long, you know, it, it's been three years that this has been happening to her, and they just throw such hate at you and shame. Usually at school, I usually lock myself in the toilet and stay in there for the whole of either break or dinner time, because there's a bell in the toilet. And what do you do when you're in the toilet? either just try to calm myself down or end up just crying. How often do you end up doing that? Nearly every day. Amber's school does try to stop the bullying, but it can't control what goes on outside the school gates. On the streets, the children go after her how they like. She's been physically attacked many times. I were over here, and she came in and started calling my name, and I called her name back. And that's how um, she's a um, shin kicker. She likes to kick people really hard in the shin. She kicked me, and I kicked her back. And then it just kept on going on for that, and she kept on slapping me, so I slapped her back. And one of the girls pushed me back and started hitting me. And then um, the other girl who started the fight, she came over with like a thin metal bar and uh, um, slapped me across the arm with it. I had a massive welt on my arm. She kept on kicking me and I had, um, the, all the skin was ripped off my elbows. But they kept on telling me things like, I'm a bitch and nobody likes me and I need to go back to America. I ended up just um, running. They called me a pussy, and then I walked off. Amber's mother has contacted the police about these incidents, but it's had little impact. Social services doesn't do anything. Council doesn't do anything. The police don't do anything. Who does? Who do I call? All schools are required to have anti-bullying policies. How they deal with the problem differs from school to school. At the City Academy in Bristol, pupils go on an eight-week course to help them understand the consequences of bullying. You've got to work out whether you think the characteristic on this card best describes a bully a victim or a witness and put it on their body, okay? So hopefully we should have some clothes on the people at the end. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, am do I, I am polite. Do you think the victim, no, will, be victim cheerful? will not be cheerful? No, no. Put humorous and social. That one. Yeah. No, no, this one's the same thing. Well. I'm brave. Mine off, I'm you? brave. That could be the victim or the bully. Rude. I'm good I'm looking. Oh, yeah, that's me. <laughs> no, no, that's me. <laughs> I'm a good listener. Actually, yeah. that's anyone. Yeah, the, the, witness, the witness. Do you want to read out some of the characteristics of a bully, then? Okay. I always want my own way. I'm narrow-minded. I'm bossy, impatient, bad-tempered, unreliable. I got a lot of confidence. I call people names. It was good. I loved going to school. I absolutely loved it. I was going in. I'd work hard in my lessons. And, but at the same time, I have a laugh with them. And I found this group of people that were supposedly cool and that everyone respected in, their, in, a, in a certain way. Even though it was respect because they were scared of them, they respected them. And I become part of that group. You're part of this big, massive group, and you can see in this other person's eyes that they are so scared. I used to think, oh, I've got power. Because it does, it makes you feel harder, and therefore you, you put across, don't you, like, your confidence sort of thing because you've got all these people behind you and you feel like you know you're going to be backed up. And also that, that gives away a choice of, well, I'm going to be, I can be horrible to people because I know I've got people behind me. Fourteen-year-old Rebecca is the eldest of three girls. Her youngest sister, Bethany, is nine. <laughs> that was not even a house sneeze. 
Her other sister Lucy is 11 and suffers from cerebral palsy. They live in Essex with their mother. I was not depressed, but there was things going on at home that like my mum and my dad had broken up and my sister Lucy was going through a rough patch and Bethany was being just basically being a little sister being a pain. I think part of me just thought I'm not gonna go and take any more of this trouble that everyone's giving me, I'm not gonna go and take any of it, so I'm gonna go and be horrible to everyone basically. And that started off like that and then I got comfortable there. But Rebecca's easy life in her gang of bullies was to change completely when she became one of their victims. Last June, one of the girls came up to me and threatened me and said, like, you're gonna pay, you're gonna pay for what you did, because she said she accused me of saying that she slept with her boyfriend. Oh, bitch. Bitch. She sort of come up behind me and uh, pulled me down. and started kicking me in the face. She caught me on the chin a couple of times. It was like, she'd kick me and I'd fall to the side and as I'd get up, another foot, like another foot would come at me. And it was just, it was like a constant battle basically to get up and run. I had a top on and she pulled down, and my top got pulled down and all my boobs were out and they were exposed to all the people that were there, all the boys that was there. Like I said, I had somewhere in the process, all my jewelry was taken, I had a couple of necklaces on, they were taken off of me. I had money stolen out of my purse and all sorts of things and it was just all in a process of about five minutes, I'd say. After the fight, Rebecca was in hospital for three days with injuries to her kidneys. The main girl responsible was reported to the police. She was given a formal warning, and Rebecca went back to school. I'd go into school, and as I walked through the corridors, I'd get people like deliberately pushing me, pinning elastic bands at me, um, I'd just pull my hair, quit pulling my hair, and then carry on walking and things like that. And that went on for about two, three months, and then everyone else just turned against me as well. Don't mind you, do you? Don't mind you, do you? Poor baby, or should I say bitch? Cow. I'd get kids come up to me and say, Simon so said you better watch your back because you're going to get stabbed up after school. What? Better watch your back. Better watch your back, yeah? You're going to get stabbed up after I could cope with my life before and before all that happened. I could cope with that. I was coping fine. I was. I, I was all right, I was, I was managing. And then they done all that and I just stopped, stopped being able to cope with it all. It's the first day back after half term. The 15 year old Abby Fawcett is at home in Wigan. She's been bullied since she was seven years old. Abby's decided she can't face her existing school any longer. I thought I just want to get out of it because what happens if it kicks off this time next year when I'm doing my marks and when I'm doing my GCSEs? Because I've up my whole life and I'd also started switching off in lessons where I was trying to block out what they were saying. I was also blocking out what the teachers were saying and what I was meant to be doing. So my work was started suffering as well, which has never happened before and I don't want to happen. Oh. One minute they'd be nice to you, the next minute they wouldn't, and then the next minute they'd be like running off and leaving you. And like when you were like sat at a table, it was like put your hand in the middle of the table if you don't like the blonde in the corner. It's just like little things that they probably thought was a joke, but it really upset you and the teachers didn't really seem to do anything about it. I know. I think he's gay. What rumours were they spreading around the school then? I was a lesbian and that I'd watched on my brother why he was with another girl and that me and my brother were very, very close and stuff like that and that um just stuff and then that I had a big BO problem. In my mind, the me, who I am, when I'm at home, when I'm away from people, when I'm at the football, is the me that people don't like at school, so I try to be somebody different. Well, what subject are you doing? History. 
What topic? I don't know. Right, OK. Abby's parents have agreed she can remain at home until they sort out a new school for her. Okay. She's using her older brother's revision notes to try and keep up with her coursework. Call Island Steam Power. I did that. Many moons ago. Yeah, well, I can remember. It's Mike Fawcett, Abigail's father. Um, we, we've removed her from school, um, but I was talking to the Deputy Director of Education last week and she said that she'd contact school and organise some work for her so she doesn't get behind, but um, how do we get hold of it and such like? Can you help, please? What's up there? How did Humphrey Davy help to solve this problem? <laughs> Hello, it's me again. All right, could you leave a message for him? Because we're, we're trying to get hold of some work for Abigail Fawcett. Throughout her school career, Abby's parents have battled to try and stop the bullying. They all have bullying policies. They all have anti-bullying policies, but they're so woolly, they're pathetic. They don't actually act on them. Because all too often, they just take the easy option and pretend it's not happening. I mean, how many head teachers have we talked to over the years where, oh, it it's, it's, the, it's the victim's fault, or, oh, it doesn't happen in my school, and that's the way they deal with it. Um, and it just carries on gaining momentum, doesn't it? We've got a child there who has had problems. She's a very, very bright girl. She may never, ever get the results that truly she can get because she wasn't being educated, which is her right in this country, to be educated to a proper level in a safe environment, and that was not happening, and that was not happening in three schools. Why shouldn't we be angry? I mean, that... Why? What has anybody there turn around to me and say, you should put up with it, or it should have been OK, or, oh, well, you know, she was asking for it. What right have those girls got to do what they've done to my daughter? No right. She is a human being. And nobody has any right to do that to another child. It's four months after the bullying first started and Rebecca is finding every day at school a struggle. I got really, really upset yesterday. that. And I was in bed and I just started thinking about going back to school and it's that waiting, that suspense of not knowing what's going to happen. You end up feeling really depressed. So I ended up having my mum in bed with me because I just was in such a state to about one, half past one. But I don't, just don't want to go to school anymore. I just want it all to be ended. Getting ready, I suppose, for the first hour is all right, and then when I go downstairs, I mean, sort of you get a bit of a shake sort of thing, your legs turn to jelly, and you get your stomach in your throat, and that sort of thing. I know Rebecca at times thinks it's all right. I tell my mum I'll sort it out, mum will make it OK. My mum can't. I can't make the police do anything. I can't make the education department do anything. I can't make school do anything. I can't make social services make a difference. That's right, isn't it? 18. 18, yep. sorry. <laughs> and you did a group like our group, and it's made him think very, very differently about bullying, about the effect it has on people's lives, what it does to people, and um, it's made him change a lot of the ways he thinks. Why did you bully people? Why did I bully people? Well, first of all, my mates started picking on this kid, and then they all started bullying him, and then I joined in, and then I just couldn't stop. <coughs> just carried on and carried on every time I've seen him. For three years, Mark and his cousin James were in a gang that terrorised his fellow pupils. If you were pissed off at a teacher, you couldn't obviously jump up and whack them. 
So you just used to go to the kitty that you just get bored and just go over and give him a couple of whacks. And then and that, used that used to make used to make you feel better as well. It was less like a rush, wasn't it? You know, you hit him and you're like, <laughs> you know. That's so much frustration and anger at it as well. And then you're right for about an hour, couple aren't of you? hours. Yeah, and then you see him, bang. You know, got to hit him again. You know. The highs the bullies experience come at the expense of their victims. I just feel small, useless, stressed, angry. What do you do when you're feeling stressed? Have a go at my mum, take out on things I can find. Walls, beds, pillows, doors, toys. Punch them, kick them, throw them, headbutt them. You won't talk to me or get things thrown at me and get told to basically go away and leave them alone. If I've had a bad day, I'll come running upstairs and just stay upstairs throwing stuff around until I've got rid of the anger or the stress. Then I'll just lie down on my bed, watch TV. That takes quite a while for him to actually open up of what's been going on. Or I find out via other children that mention it to me and then I have to ask him. So why is that, James? Um, sometimes because I don't want to tell my mum stuff because then it gets her involved and then she tries to sort things out which can't be sorted out. And sometimes because I just don't want people fussing over it. Rebecca's situation is deteriorating. Today, she and her friend Kelly have walked out of school because of the bullying. With Rebecca's attendance sliding, her family thinks she should change schools. I said to her that she, she doesn't want them to win, but I feel she'd do better now if she just gave up and went to another school. It was going through me and I'm thinking, now if I go to a new school, I know that it'll push me over the edge, I know that. Why? Because you're going to find it hard to mix much, in? Yeah, to make no friends. But at least you could learn, you get some education. Just walking down the street, I find really terrifying, but I still do it. And at the end of the day, me having to go to a different school would scare the life out of me, because I'd have to go and make all these new friends, and I don't want to, because it's too scary. My shoe, 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 my shoe. For James, things have also taken a sudden turn for the worse. He was refusing to go to school this morning because he didn't want to go through what he went through yesterday. Because all the kids kept on taking the mickey out of me because I had short hair. Mushroom face, mushroom hair, a thin bin, short stump. Nearly every single kid in my form room was laughing at me, having a go at me and stuff. And then it got worse throughout the day. So it would probably even be worse this morning than it was yesterday. Plus I've got totally different teachers where I'm in classes with new people, so they'd laugh because they've only just seen it. They might not. They would. Yeah, but those that matter that your friends wouldn't. Yeah, but there's not very many. For us, better to have a few good friends than know lots and lots of people and have no friends. We were in an art lesson and they were getting like rolls of tissue paper, dipping it in watered down glue and sticking it to their models. But some people decided to throw it into my hair. When I came home, it was all stuck together at the back of my head where they had thrown it and that's... You couldn't let them win, basically. If it's not good enough a reason to stay away from school because he's got to learn to not listen to what people say. I have to grin and bear it. Which is the best option, really. Because otherwise it'll get like middle school. In middle school, there was three or four gangs, 
trying to chase after me and have a go at me. And in the end, I ended up hitting one of them with a stick as hard as possible, and it made him bleed across the face. And I got told off for that, so when I came home, I was just fed up with it. So I decided to stand in the road. I couldn't take it any more than that, I just wanted it to end. And my mum came out, found me, and brought me in. He had always said, what was the point of going to school? What was the point of living? Where was it leading? And that he was worthless, useless, would never amount to anything, because according to everybody, that's what he'd been told, and he was beginning to believe it. And all my fears came to a head, because the way he was talking was that basically he didn't want to carry on no more. He couldn't face life no more. As Amber's spring term progresses, she continues to struggle with the bullying both in and out of school. A lot of times she, when she's running late and from school and these things pop into my head, you know, that maybe they've got her cornered. I'm scared for her. in school and, and we were in games up here. You know, she'd lift her top up and saying that or perving on her and she kept on doing that. Then another thing happened today. Every time I walked by him, he'd go lesbian. Just kept on calling me a lesbian and a bitch all day. Now they think she's a vampire, so they take your film of her. I wish that, like, I could wave my arms and they're frozen and then I could just get them on the floor and kick them and kick them and kick them and then walk in, unfreeze them and they'll be full of bru bruises and they won't know it hit them. Literally. Don't cry, you'll get me going. I used to want to commit suicide and everything. I used to like make plans up and like I would tell my mum before when she asked me why I was so sad and everything, I'd tell her about it and that's when she got worried and um, asked a counsellor to come. Because um, she used to say that she's afraid that like she's going to come home and I've committed to suicide or something. How serious were you about that? I was real serious because I were like I was ready and everything, and I used to tell my mum that like I, it's kind of stupid, but I used to write like letters to my mum and tell her how much I loved her and everything, and you know like kind of goodbye letters and everything. If it gets bad like it has been in the Christmas, I don't think I'd be able to cope with that again. Like, I couldn't even cope with it barely while it was going on. If it happened again, I don't think I'd be able to cope with it. I, I think I'd probably just snap. Did you ever feel sorry for your victims? No. Oh. Did any of their parents come in, like, complaining? 
Yeah, his, his mate was coming, complaining and all that. But... In one ear and out the other, innit? Mark was put on a course to help him understand how the victims of bullying feel. One day he brought a picture of about 30 people on this one tiny little person in the corner and he said that's how he felt. He didn't want to come to school because of the bullying. And it made you think about yeah. the victim. Yeah. It all stopped for a kid. He stopped getting bullied then. When you look back at being a bully, what do you think you were like? I think I was a nasty person because I used to just go up to the people and just hit them for the fun of it, but I didn't think how they felt, you know? If I could, if I could go back there again, I wouldn't bully, but it's made me stronger for being a bully. I know I've uh, corrected my mistakes. One little picture can change them, you know? It's weird. We could have destroyed his life doing that, and that, down inside, that makes you feel really bad. So what if that was you? What if that was you?